Okay, so I made my own STD uh, libraries, and this is for Cave Engine. My name is Guilherme, I'm a game developer, and I've, I'm the creator of Cave Engine, my 3D game engine. And, of course, you can check the game engine here at um, each.io, or join my Discord server to talk about it. And in this game engine and game development world, when it comes to like programming in C++, uh, the professionals always say that using std and i'm a and i'm talking about the standard c++ library is bad for a number of reasons it's like uh bad performance wise and memory and management stuff but the real thing is uh if you're starting and if you want to make such a big project uh, like a game engine it's a good idea to use std because well uh there's just a bunch of stuff, a bunch of other stuff that you need to worry and uh, figure out first that, well, I recommend you to start using STD. But it reaches a point in the development that you no longer can rely on STD because you want to do some different stuff. And this point uh, in Cave Engine is now. I'm, I need to replace STD. I need to stop using STD. And that's why this project exists. I'll try to explain very briefly here to not waste your time. And spoilers, I need your help <laughs> because there's one thing that I can't figure out. So let me show you um, everything. And first things first, um, very, like, very fast here, why I decided to move uh, away from std and implement my own um, this time and believe it or not it's not because of memory management and it's not because of performance as uh, you will usually find in the industry it's because of serialization i want to uh, improve the way i serialize stuff and serialization i'm talking about saving and loading stuff to memory but i'm also talking about uh, reflecting stuff to the user interface because of course cave engine does have an editor that you can open and and see what's going on um in your game uh, and it does have a bunch of properties and stuff so this is important to be reflected and it does have python api so yeah it is also important to um uh, to be able to reflect all the data in the engine into the python api so uh, because of these reasons uh, i kind of need i kind of wanted to have a little bit more control uh, about the data structures about the especially the vectors and the unordered map uh, which is like a hash table because i use them a lot in cave and it is really hard to create like a reflection system and serialization system that say hey please save this vector because well what if the vector is like an integer vector of integers it's super easy to save but what if it's a vector of pointers to integers oh it's a little bit less easy but still easy but what if it's a vector of uh, a custom cave engine data type well um, a little bit less easy but still easy enough but what if it's a vector of other vectors, uh, STD vectors, that is not a cave engine data type, but it's not like a plain old data um, type, just like an integer. Well, then it's a little bit less fun to deal with. And I've been struggling a lot to this problem, and I decided, well, i am just go ahead and make my own STD, because then I can make this um, STD part of like cave engine library, and I can make it uh, in hand from cave engine object, and then I can add custom procedures to save and load. So then if I say, oh, this object does have a vector of whatever, well, this vector will have uh, the correct procedures to save and load itself and uh, reflect to the UI and add it to Python scripting and so on. So maybe a little bit of over-engineer, but trust me, uh, after so many years working with Cave the way it is without using these abstractions, uh, it's really a pain, so I'm, I'm replacing this. So. And go ahead and show you everything I did, and uh, you are seeing that this is available on, on GitHub. Yes, Cave Engine is not open source, open source, but some parts of the, the code um, I find nice to, to open the source for two reasons. First of all, uh, this is a common thing. I mean, I'm not reinventing any wheel here. I'm not doing something crazy. Uh, and you may want in your project to, to have like a different a custom uh, STD library that supports like std string, std hash, std vector, std list, std pair, std unordered map, and std map. This is like the stuff that I'm planning to support. Uh, most of them are done already. Uh, so yes, you can go ahead and use it. And the other thing is, this is a critical part of the engine, and this is a critical part of everything. So the more eyes we have on this, 
to find out bugs and stuff, the better it is. That's why it's open source. This, this part here, it's open source. You can check the link in the description. So um, it does have, it is very simple. Let me clear here. I'm here with VS Code and I do have the, the code here, open it. It does have a make file, so I can just uh, type make and it will build uh, a test uh, program, um, which is here being dot slash tests, of course, I can open binary. And if I run this test, it will do two things. The first thing is it will do a bunch of exhaustive unit tests because uh, it is very important to uh, know like if this works and if there's no magic random crashes. So that's why the strings does have like uh, almost 300 lines of code of unit tests. So to make sure that every function in this works. And by the way, like um, Cave Engine is camo cased. So this is camo cased as well. This STD is camo cased so you can see pushback. But just for the sake of uh, not annoying me when I port Cave Engine to use this, uh, it does work with underline. So I can just do push underline back and it will work just fine, uh, just for compatibility. But the main one is the camo case at one. Um, so everything does have unit tests. It is very extensive. Some of them are simple, of course, but some of them like the vector uh, is really a lot of stuff because I really need to test a bunch of things. Uh, it also have like memory um, corruption tests. So I do use Vol Volgrind on Linux here to check uh, if there's no memory leaks. You can see here, um, there's no leaks. All these unit tests, um, I run um, through Valgrind to check for the leaks. So there's no memory leaks. Awesome. So it's reliable because there's a bunch of unit tests. It, there's no memory leaks because you don't want to uh, deal with memory problems when you are working with a library like that. And it is faster than STD in most parts. So this is the part where I want <laughs> your help. Um, I've made a bunch of test performance against STD because like STD is like the baseline. STD vector, STD string, STD uh, northern map is the baseline. And I want to go at least as fast as STD, uh, but with the goal, the final goal to be faster than STD. So you can see here my string, I do have a test for it. Iterating, reserving and removing is faster. Um, and adding is a little bit slower, unfortunately. I'm not able to fully uh, improve this. Uh, someone in my Discord say that uh, I can take advantage, like create a union inside a string, because if, if the string is too small, um, you can like reuse some of the memory dedicated to like the container. Um, and I agree, I forgot the name of this, but I leave in the comments if you remember the, the, the name of this. Uh, so there's a bunch of small optimizations that you can do, but I'm trying to uh, improve this adding, the string adding uh, performance because it's bad. Um, it's not terribly bad, but it is uh, not as good as SCD string. Uh, again, this is like microseconds and stuff like that. So it's not terribly bad, especially for uh, 50,000 elements. But yeah, room for improvement, but your rest is faster when it comes to the std list versus cave list cave list is really way faster than um std like the adding elements to the list uh it's three times faster than std iterating over the list is two times faster and removing elements from the list is three times faster as well so this is very good std vector as well wins uh so adding is twice as fast Iterating is also twice as fast and removing is also twice, twice as fast, which is amazing. And then uh, we go to the real problem here that I'm not being able to optimize, the unordered map. Uh, unordered mapping in C++, like in STD, uh, is a hash table. And if you're not familiar with a hash table, I was surprisingly not very familiar with it as well. So, but basically what it is, is it uses like it hashes the key uh, because like again, the the map in in STD is pretty much like a Python dictionary that you can have like. So we have a test, which is a dictionary, and you can have a key that correspond to a value, like a number, and then you can access this uh, by the key. Oops and it will return the number. Uh, and this add, uh, gives you fast access. This is like, uh, it can be in, in, 
in STD is O1 and it can be O log N. Uh, but well anyways it's fast this is what matters and um, it is a hash table I was not familiar with it I had to study a lot and kind of make one um, and you can see here that adding to the hash table is twice as fast than not twice but it is almost twice as fast uh, twice faster than SCD so which is great um, this is random access, okay? So randomly access uh, data inside this hash table is more than, it's, it's almost three times faster than STD, which is amazing because the main reason why Cave Engine uses um, hash table is because I want to have random access to the data. So this is great. Um, but then when it comes to like removing, it's a little bit slower, not a huge deal here it is just a little bit slower but not a lot but still room for improvement but then iterating this on northern map is terribly slower than std uh and i i've been trying to figure out why like optimize my uh iterators because if you go to the code you will see let me open the hash map code um, by the way it's called hash map it's not called a northern map it's called hash map again uh, there's an iterator here. Um, I was. This is actually my first time implementing C++ iterators. I never did this, but I well, decided to do it. Um, and I've been trying to optimize this for ages, and I was not able to. And it makes no sense for me why it's like 20. Uh, it's actually 29 times slower than uh, SD. Actually, more. Let me do the math here. It's like 76085 divided by 2108. It's 32, it's 30, I, about 30 times uh, slower than STD. And I have no idea what I can do to improve this. I had one idea, uh, actually, that is to literally, inside this hash map, put uh, an STD list here. Because you can see here that iterating a list in my engine, uh, in my STD um, abstraction, is way faster than even STD. Uh, and this is like for 100,000 elements. So technically, if I just append um, each element here into a cave list, it will probably like reduce to this to um, 1.124, and this will be faster than uh, an ordered map. But again, it's an extra overhead. Uh, it will add some overhead to adding uh, elements here, not random access, but it will be a little bit slower, not a lot, as you can see here, uh, it will still be faster than a northern map. And then you need to add some overhead to removing the elements as well, because it will need to remove from the list. Um, and the removing is not so good here. Um, so yeah, I need to improve this and I need help. I have no idea how to optimize this, uh, so if you can help me just join the discord server and let's talk about this and optimize uh, one thing that is important to address here in this video is that my hash map does not have a he hash uh, function you can see here that it does have like a he hash method but it's like to do and I do have like some code to crash the application if it accidentally reach this um, this part here so it does not call the he hash anytime but from my understanding the he hash will not gonna improve the iteration as uh, iteration access because uh it's just it's just like each element is a ran is randomly placed on memory so it does not make sense to improve it would improve the random access but as you can see the random access is really very fast so I'm, I'm afraid to believe that i don't even need the he hash function at all um because it's faster like from my use case it's really good but the iteration is bad so yes that's it uh, i've made this video to show you guys that i've made this uh, library to say that it's open source you can check it out it's under mit license i guess yes it's under mit so and i i'd appreciate if you could uh help me to figure out how to make this hash table faster please help me because this is the last piece of the puzzle to keep going with cave engine by the way if you want to contribute make sure that the the contribution passes all the tests all the unit tests 
um, tests and that you follow the naming conventions that we have here. Just make things more organized. So join the Discord server if you want as well. And I will be glad to talk to you about this. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, this is a quick video just to update you guys what's going on. And by the way, if you're curious about Cave Engine, as soon as I finish this, I'm planning to uh, port Cave Engine to use uh, this uh, STD implementation instead of STD, of course. And then I will start working on the reflection system problem, uh, probably. So that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching, and I see you um, in the next one. Bye.